I was late. You're live now. Let's go on the record on cause number DC209893, David Tyler Moss versus Marco Princip. Council, make your appearance. Thank you, Your Honor. Hunter Nunn, NUNN, almost Warrench, Warrench and Nunn for the plaintiff's judgment creditors. Dan White for uh, the plaintiff's uh, David Tyler Moss and Fiddlelissimus Inc. Your Honor, this is Philip Simpkins making a special appearance on behalf of Brian Martin. Your Honor, this is Jamal Johnson also making a special appearance on behalf of Brian Martin. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and proceed. We're here on a subservice. Yes, uh, Judge, but, um, and, and Mr. Simpson is going to lead as far as uh, Mr. Mr. Martin's concerned, but we do, we would like the court to rule on uh, Mr. Martin's special appearance and uh, his motion to reconsider as well. Is what, What's set for today? This is our motion for alternative service, Your Honor, that's set for hearing today. Okay. We'll rule on that today and then get to the other stuff at a later date. So, uh, Mr. Nunn, if you want to proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. I want to thank the court for its time this afternoon. I know this was uh, a pretty fast event here, and we really appreciate that. I'll, I'll try to keep this short, Judge. I, I don't know if the court's had an opportunity to read our motion. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Judge. I'll, I'll try to keep this short and just make a few remarks. Um, this is a game of hide and seek. That this whole thing is, is a game that Mr. Martin's playing, and I think that's pretty clear. He's not the only one. I, I think his wife, Holly, who's his co-defendant, is in on this too. Uh, you know, really, Judge, I think they've waived jurisdiction. At least Brian Martin has. Uh, he's waived service. I, I don't understand how, you know, he can say on the one hand, well, here I am appearing in court, you know, in open court on the and your honor, the court was there the Friday before last. The Martin was with us. I, I don't know how they can really say that, you know, he somehow is, is entitled to service and hasn't laid it at this point. Um, the, the bottom line is these are people who are trying to evade service. I think that's very clear from the end. Well, let, let, let me ask you my, my main question here is what what proof do you have that these are the correct addresses to perform alternative service on them? So the 12452 address on Cajun Drive in Frisco, we've given the court evidence that that's owned by Holly Martin. We presented the public record from the Collins Central Appraisal District's website. We've also presented the actual sale contract from January of 2020. We've also presented the listing agreement when they tried to sell the house in September and then the termination. It, at some level, they're still involved with this house. Okay. The, the, old, the other problem becomes when dealing with Mr. Martin for the past six years, Judge, is that you may recall that originally the record should reflect he had an attorney way back in August and we served that attorney, Mr. Nunn and Mr. Warrens did with first request for post judgment production and uh, in, in a first set of interrogatories. He then fired that attorney. And so for six weeks, if you will, he didn't have counsel. And in fact, if I understand correctly, uh, Mr. Simpkins, or for that matter, Mr. Johnson, just got their notice on file in the last day or two, having already appeared, Mr. Johnson attempted to appear on October 2nd. And on that day, the court granted our motion to compel, and that discovery is actually due today. Uh, Mr. Martin doesn't want any notice. That's the truth of the matter. He has allegedly absenting himself from not only your jurisdiction, but from Texas and the United States, supposedly claiming he is in England. That, that's not what we're here about today, right? We're here about right. Holly Martin, right? Okay. But, but the purpose for the, oh, no, no, but the purpose for alternative service on all of them is because they want to be ghosts. They don't want any fixed locations. They don't want anybody knocking on the door. I, I can appreciate that, but he can't run, nor can Miss Martin, Holly Martin, run 
from their email addresses. <clears throat> and that, that has become as whether it was we're comfortable with that since we've been practicing law, Judge. <laughs> you know, I, I've served people by carrier pigeon. <laughs> My comment to the court is, you know, uh, that email and social media now, I think the court knows, too, that under 106, the Texas Supreme Court has amended that to go into effect, I think, later this year. But the, the reality is, is where you may not want people to know what your street mailing address is, you do want people to be able to reach you via email. And just like attorneys have to provide addresses and fax numbers and contact information to the court, we want the court to please order the attorneys for Mr. Martin to make sure that you know he could turn around and fire him at five o'clock this evening. We'd be right back here tomorrow wasting your time or taking your valuable time from other matters. That's what we don't want to do. So it's imperative to us to be able to provide that notice, that due process that we're all required to give, and we want to give it. Okay. We just we just want to have the option to give it by email if that's possible. Okay. Response. Your Honor, this is okay. um, somewhat in kind of in a quandary. I feel like the court should rule on the special appearance prior to moving forward with this hearing. Um, I certainly don't want to waive special, our special appearance um, as we sit here. And I believe prior to- Do you represent Holly Martin? No, I do not, Your Honor. I do not. Just Brian Martin in this case today. Okay. But my concern is that we are potentially waiving his special appearance by making an argument opposing the alternative service in this case. Don't know if if we could if I could argue my special appearance, it goes somewhat to their alternative service. In other words, the facts are going to be the same. All right, but I mean the special appearance isn't set today, correct? Well, it's not set today. The, the, the concern is though that by responding to the motion for alternative service, I am waiving the special appearance. I find my I'm, I'm kind of in a quandary here unless I'm misunderstanding something. Your Honor, I, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I just wanted to ask if I could briefly respond to that, please. Sure. His first problem, Your Honor, is he's made a general appearance already. Brian Martin has. We, we did that not this past Friday, but the Friday before. It's an open court on the record. He appeared, he gave us the name. That's a general appearance, and there was no special appearance verified on file in 120 but he's already waived in his jurisdiction. <laughs> you know, I, and ju I, judge, I, if I, I may, and, and and not to interrupt, um, he's actually he's actually not waived it because I mean he he's entitled to make an appearance to ask for a deferment of the hearing without waiving, um, and also he's also you know entitled to make an make an appearance uh, just for the purposes of of making the continuance without waiving. So that's not a waiver with respect to service. I feel like you guys really want to kind of cross blades here, but really we're here on a very simple motion, which is a subservice for uh, Miss Martin. It's not, we're not going to hear the special appearance. We're not hearing a motion to reconsider today. It's a very simple, straightforward hearing. And so Mr. Nunn, you're just asking to serve her via email. Is that it? Your, Your honor, I have a, a voice recording from Brian Martin saying <laughs> contact me through email i refuse to give me my your address i have him on voice recording i'm happy to share it with the court that's all we want your honor an order saying yes we can serve him via email because he won't serve give us him or her i thought we were dealing with both college. judge both judge. both okay that that's what's included in the motion and i i think they missed i heard you when you said her i think uh almost and war and hunter may have not have heard you when you that you said her, but we're talking about both Holly Martin, his alleged current wife. So, and so, so let, let me just let me just bring something Martin. out here. I, I think that this is it didn't didn't he give us his email address at this last <laughs> hearing, if I recall correctly? I mean, so we have an address. I, I think this particular motion is kind of a no-brainer, so I'm going to go ahead and grant the motion. Well, for Your Honor, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. And so 
it, and then we can, I know you guys want to fight over the special appearance and reconsideration and all that stuff. It's just not set for today. Have you submitted an order, Mr. Nunn? <coughs> yes, Your Honor, I have. And let me, let me pull it up. I'm not sure I saw it. Let's see. I'm going to do I'm this. going to share screen real quick. Your Honor, if I may point out a couple things, we did file a response to their motion subject to our special appearance that I think is very pertinent to the court's ruling today. First off, let me just see where, where is this order that you want me to sign? You see it on the screen? Can you give me just a second, please, Your Honor? I think I've got it. It's uh, right here on October 6th. Is, is that October 6th docket entry, Your Honor? Yes, sir. October 6th. So this, is it this order here? That's it. Yeah. Okay. And this covers both of them? It, it does. It actually covers a couple of different methods of service because the authority I looked up was actually more favorable when multiple methods were used. Okay. All right. And so you said you filed a response. I did, Your Honor. Where, where, when was the response filed? It was filed probably about four hours ago. Okay. Uh, I, there's no way I... Well, then, can I... I'd like to bring it to the court's attention. If sure, I go ahead. All right, Your Honor, we're dealing with a foreign resident here and <laughs> they both live in the United Kingdom. The <laughs> law requires that they adhere to Texas Rule of Civil Procedure 108A. They had notice that the parties that are being discussed today, Holly and uh, Brian, were foreign residents. They knew they were foreign residents back. They had an email, Mr. Y did, he's got it attached to his motion that, that she says she is in, she's from the United Kingdom back in May of 2019. In Mr. Nunn's affidavit himself, he says that he received a phone call from Mr. Martin and Mr. Martin said he lives in England. Your Honor, that was back on September 23rd or 24 and 24 of this year. Okay, they have in their affidavit for sure identified citizenship. They had the first service was after the 23rd when Mr. Nunn had confirmation that Mr. Martin and Holly were both foreign residents. They have to comply with 108A. They didn't do so. They're now take, they're, they're trying to pitch or trying to take an end around the requirements of 108A when they've known that Mr. Martin and Holly were foreign residents. They can't take an end around the rules and ask you now to rely on some other rule that's not applicable in this case. May I just briefly point out a couple of things of interest maybe to the court? Sure. First off, while Miss while Miss Martin does have a uh, an immigration card that she used for the transaction that's alleged in one of our pleadings, one of the fraudulent transactions, one, two, four, five, two Cajun drive in Frisco purchased with $340,000 cash from Brian Martin's mother, all part of the TRO and the turnover order evidence that we already provided to the court. Uh, Brian Martin was in the United States uh, earlier this month. We still think he's actually in the United States and Brian Martin is not a quote unquote resident or a citizen of England or the United Kingdom. There is an entire process that one has to go through just like when you attempt citizenship or, uh, in the United States and simply getting on a plane, if that's what he did and go, went to England does not make him a foreign or an international uh, resident. Uh, in addition, Mr. Martin lived continuously in Frisco in Collin County from the time of the trial in district court back in 2016. He lived at 3100 Coit Road in Frisco, Texas, apartment 429. He lived at 4422 Maple Shade, apartment 4422. Uh, we have reason to believe he is still in Frisco from other people that know him. 
And he is all he is attempting to do by getting on a plane is to suggest to this court that he is not going to submit himself to your jurisdiction, period, end of story. Now, we have divorce pleadings where he admitted as well in, in the, this past summer, he was a resident of Frisco, Texas, and he got divorced from Holly, excuse me, Chrissy Barmore Martin last year. He listed his residence as one, two, four, five, two in those pleadings in on file in the family, one of the family district courts. I think it was the 468th in Collin County. Holly Martin filed for divorce against him, listing the exact same address of where that house is in her name right now in Frisco, Texas. And with all due respect, I, I'm going to give Mr. Simpkins and Mr. Johnson the complete benefit of the doubt. But I think they, you know, I, what what Brian Martin says, I wouldn't believe him unless I witnessed the sun coming up in the east if he told me it came up in the east this morning. So by simply getting on a plane and, 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 and absenting himself from the court's physical jurisdiction, in no way is this court as well aware of it. Uh, under Burger King and its progeny, long arm jurisdiction, so on and so forth. He has more than availed himself of the rights and privileges uh, in, 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 in the, this court, in, the, in this jurisdiction. So he can't just pick up and leave and say, I'm not a resident here anymore. It just doesn't work that way, as you know. Your Honor. Yeah, judge, if I, if I may, um, Judge. Um, yeah, this, what, whoever, what, let me just say this. Whoever wants, this is your last shot. So Mr. Simpkins or Mr. Johnson, which one of you wants to speak? This is your last shot. Go ahead. Go Johnson. ahead, Mr. Simpkins. Go ahead, Mr. Simpkins. No, I'm going to wait. Go ahead. We'll, we'll just end with you. Well, Judge, if you are going to rule, I just want to object on the record on behalf of Mr. Martin uh, so that he doesn't waive his special appearance. Um, and, and that's all I want to say. Okay. All righty, I'm going to go ahead and sign the order, uh, and uh, we will go from there. You guys be safe, okay? Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. You good luck. Thank you. Have a good one, sir. Let's see.